In this video, we're going to have a look at systems of simultaneous equations uh, in X, Y, and Z, and how they relate to the intersection of planes. So let's start by having a look at a particular system of equations. So we're going to call this case one. So we've got those three equations there. I'm going to try and see whether they have any solutions. Well, the quickest way to do that is to represent them in matrix format. So this is the equivalent of saying one, two, minus three, minus three, minus five, six, and minus two, one, two, times x, y, z equals minus nine, three, eight. And the way to see whether there's a unique set of solutions for that is to find the determinant of this matrix here. If that matrix has a non-zero determinant, then it can be inverted, which will lead to a unique set of solutions. So we need to see now whether this determinant is non-zero. So I've done a previous video on how to find the determinant of a three by three matrix. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a shortcut here and use the calculator instead. So we'll go into matrix mode. And I'm gonna define matrix A and it's a three by three matrix. So one minus three minus two. Unfortunately, this calculator inputs the matrices in rows. Two minus five, one minus three, six, two. Okay, so I've got matrix A there, so I'm gonna do a matrix calculation. Press operation again and scroll down to determinant. Press operation again and input matrix A. And then we've got the determinant of matrix A, which is 11. So the determinant of our matrix M, let's call this matrix here M, equals 11. Therefore, equations have a unique set of solutions. Equations have a unique solution. So if we want to find out what that solution was, we've got M times some vector V, X, Y, Z equals minus nine, three, eight. If we multiply both sides from the left, by the inverse of M, these two cancel just to give the identity. So I get the vector of solutions, which is, so let's try that now. So operation matrix A, and we're doing the inverse. So matrix A at the minus one times, so I'm going to define a new vector, minus nine, three, eight. So to find matrix, and I'll make that matrix B. Number of rows, I want three rows and one column to make it a vector. Minus nine, three, eight. So I'll go back to my matrix calculation now. Oh, I've got to do it again. So matrix A, inverse, times my vector V, which I saved in matrix B, equals two, one, four. Two, one, four. Therefore, x, y, z equals two, one, four. Now I've got rid of some of the pain of the calculations here. Just sped it up with by using the calculator. If the question asks you to show full working, you should do that. And my previous videos will show you how to do that. I've I've done uh, examples of this from the year one materials, so you can have a look at that if you want to look at more in depth way of doing this. So I can now actually give this case a title, which is unique solution. So now using autograph, I can see that I've plotted all three of these equations on the same set of three dimensional axes, which looks to produce a bit of a mess, but we're predicting that these planes meet at a single point. So looking at this here, I can see that the planes look to meet roughly round here, so if I'm right, if I plot our proposed solution, which was, as we can see, 2, 1, 4, if I plot that point on here, I'm predicting 
that it should be that particular point there. That so that point should be two one four. So let's go and plot that point in autograph. So two one four. Indeed, it is. All three planes meet at a single point two one four. So the equations are consistent, meaning all the planes meet at a single point. So let's summarize. So in context. Three planes meet at a single point in this case here where the determinant is non zero. So when the determinant of M is not equal to zero. And there's a diagram for that happening there. So now moving on to another example. And there it is there. And we're going to call this case two. Which again for now shall remain nameless. Until we've discovered what this case actually is. So. Putting it in a matrix again. One. Three. One. One. Minus one. Two. And two. Fourteen. Zero. Times X. Y. Z equals minus 2, 6, minus 5. Minus 2, 6, minus 5. And let's find the determinant of that matrix. So we'll define that to be matrix A, 3 by 3. So 1, 1, 2, 3, minus 1, 14. Just overwrite my answers from the last uh, example. 1, 2, zero okay operation matrix calculation operation scroll down to get determinant and operation matrix a you can see that the determinant is zero so in this case the determinant of m is zero that tells us that this matrix here is not invertible therefore the equations don't have a unique set of solutions so therefore, equations do not have unique solutions. But not unique can mean one of two things. It can mean it has an infinite number of correct solutions or no solutions at all. So if it does not have unique solutions, it could have no solutions at all. Or could have an infinite number of solutions, in which case there are solutions, but they're not unique. So the test we'll have to perform here is to check whether these equations are consistent with each other or inconsistent. So consistent means they have an infinite number of solutions. Inconsistent means they contradict each other. So the best way to check for consistency or inconsistency, in my opinion, is to pick a pair of equations. Let's say A and B and eliminate a variable. Pick another set of equations, say B and C, and eliminate the same variable, then compare what we have left. Well, actually, I can see equation C already has Z eliminated, so most of the work's been done for us. So now let's pick A and B and eliminate Z also. So if I want to eliminate Z, I'm better off timesing equation A by 7 to get the coefficients of Z to match. So 7 lots of A is 7x plus 7y plus 14z equals minus 14. And equation B is 3x minus y plus 14z equals 6. So if I do the top, take away the bottom, if I subtract the two, that gives me 4x plus 8y the z's are eliminated, equals minus 20. And that can be simplified down a little. If I divide everything by 4, I get x plus 2y equals minus 5. Oh, okay. Well, that there is exactly the same as equation C. So the equations are consistent with each other. We haven't found a contradiction, 
they've actually agreed with each other. So therefore, there's an infinite number of solutions. So the conclusion here is equations consistent Therefore, infinite number of solutions. So in the practical context of talking about these as the equation of planes, there's an infinite number of points at which all three planes intersect each other. And that can be illustrated here. So we can see here, if I turn this around, all three points, all three planes intersect along a line. So there's an infinite number of points at which those three planes, all three of them intersect. And that particular structure there, where all three planes intersect along a line, is called a sheaf. So let's name this case. Case two is a sheaf. I.e. planes intersect along a line. So equations consistent, therefore infinite number of solutions, therefore planes intersect along a line and form a sheaf. And just remind ourselves of the conditions for that. Det m equals zero and equations consistent. And just to put a picture on there, there it is, a sheaf of planes. So you can probably see where the next case is now. So case three. And this is where the determinant equals zero and the equations are inconsistent. So let's have a look at such an example. So let's again put this into a matrix form. So we've got one minus one, one, two, one minus four and six minus 2 minus 2 x y z equals 5 3 1 so let's work out the determinant just check that it is actually 0 so define matrix A as a 3 by 3 and 1 2 6 minus 1 1 minus 2 and 1 minus 4 minus 2. Operation, matrix calculation, operation, and we'll go down to determinant. There it is. Determinant, then operation, matrix A. Determinant matrix A is 0. So the determinant of our matrix is 0. Therefore, no unique solutions. So what I suggest before is picking a pair of equations, eliminating a variable, picking another pair of equations, eliminating a variable and seeing what happens. We well, can see here these are ideally placed to eliminate x so we'll do, go with a and b first. We'll do a plus b gives, well the x's disappear to get 3y plus 4z equals 8. And I also see if I add b plus c, picking a different pair of equations now, I can also eliminate x to get minus 3y minus 4z equals 4. So I'm going to call these equations e and f. So notice now I can solve these equations. If I do E plus F, then the Y's eliminate and the Z's eliminate to give 0 on the left-hand side equals 12. 0 equals 12. What a ridiculous answer to get. 
the equations are inconsistent because 0 can't equal 12. Therefore, equations inconsistent. So in such a case where the equations are inconsistent, the three planes will never meet. So I've plotted all three planes here. And just to illustrate, these three planes, all three of them never meet. We can see pairs of them meet, but I can see right through the middle here, which means that all three planes will never touch each other at the same time. So this happens when the equations are inconsistent. And I've just noticed a little typo in the example I've used here. That letter there should be a Z. So I'll just change that. Z. There we go. So I can conclude here. Therefore, planes never meet at the same point. Or points. And just elaborating on the case here. Planes never meet at same points. There we go. So going back to the simulation, we can see that these three planes never meet. We'll point out that before. But notice that none of the planes are parallel. Now, in an exam question, you're probably going to be asked to point out whether the planes are parallel or not. We can see these aren't parallel. But let's have a look at the effect of making two planes parallel. So to make them parallel, we we'll make sure that the x, y, and z coordinates are multiples of each other. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change equation 3 now to be double equation 1 in terms of the x, y, and z coefficients. But I'm going to leave the number at the end, the constant as it is. So that should say 2x plus 4y plus 12z. Let's change it to say that 2x plus 4y plus 12z and we'll leave the one as it is and we can now see that two of the planes are parallel to each other so in any exam answer just always make sure you do a check of the coefficients to see whether the normal vectors are actually parallel to each other and therefore that the planes are parallel to each other for more videos like this subscribe to our youtube channel and to find out more about our skype tuition and revision courses go to a